So anyway, turns out that the small enclosed seating area was actually the place where their deity descended and sat, and was not, as I originally thought, a bio-waste disposal unit. And between that and getting the Emperor's youngest daughter pregnant, it seemed prudent to leave the system while I could leave in one piece. The Anfraco shook his head ruefully, as the various species equivalent of laughter rang through the hull of the ship. The laughter subsided, and appreciative murmurs took their place. Nearly as a group, those sitting in the hull turned towards the only one who hadn't spoken, a figure dressed in an ornate cloak of deep reds and bright green. Well, friend, care to share your story? The Ficardo ventured. No. Ah, don't be that way, this is a long trip, and sharing stories and food is a tradition as old as time. Besides, nobody takes a cargo hauler through the deep black if they have any other options, so I know you just have a story. Everybody has a story. My story is... epic. And my own. There was a collective eye roll at his proclamation, followed by silence. Everyone knew that if someone says they have the best story, they're just looking for an opportunity to share it. Lothgardo called James, sighed and stood, others soon copying. The richly dressed stranger watched, concerned, before waving them back into their seats. Fine, fine. I'll share my story as well. The group exchanged small smiles before taking their seats again. The stranger watched satisfied before launching into his story. You may not recognize me, or my species, but we have been searching the stars for longer than most of your species have even existed. We are old and grand, one of the original spacefarers. What's your species called? interrupted James. We are called the Cypress, and we are many. I thought that was the pet species of the other, James began whispering to Companion. Quiet! As I was saying, we are an old species, a noble species. In our early days and our initial push beyond the bounds of our home, our recovered elders discovered something, an anomaly, a being of some intelligence but whose very presence destroyed the minds of those who spent too much time in close proximity to it. Realising that this being posed a threat to the very existence of our society, those elders marshaled an effort to contain the effects of the being. It restricted us to our home planet for decades, centuries even, but finally, through means unknown, those ancient elders managed to confine the creature. In the absence of the mental degradation that the being caused, our species prospered. We grew, discovering the hidden mysteries of the galaxy. With time, the threat that the being had once posed to us was forgotten. The ancient warnings were ignored. Rules were broken. Mistakes were made. By who? asked an amused James. Unimportant. Back to the story. I served as valet to the Empress my whole life, as my mother had, and her mother before her. The Empress was wise and good, but needed my advice for decisions both mundane and vital. Unfortunately, the Empress could be strong at will, despite my timely and insightful advice. She was convinced by someone that the threat that the creature had posed had faded, that what remained by this point would surely be rare and valuable materials. Obviously, I counted against such a foolish idea, even if my family's mining companies would profit nicely from the awarded contracts. Despite this, I had no conflict of interest and did my duty, telling the Empress how foolish an idea this was. The Empress disagreed, and assigned me to oversee the excavation of the ancient tomb that housed the bean. The trek was long, arduous, and filled with danger. For the sake of brevity, I won't delve into the details of the journey, but suffice to say that the bravery of that group could fill volumes. Through great seas, seemingly unending tunnels, and desolate plains we travelled, our technology made useless by the malevolence of the creature's radioactive presence. Finally, we approached the ancient mountain that contained it. Following the ancient guides, we made our way deep into the mountain, passing artifacts and science that the eyes cannot describe, nor the mind imagine. After passing through fire and shadow, our eyes struggled to understand the sheer size and volume of the ancient being before us. But one thing was clear. This was not a deep and rotting being. This thing was alive, perhaps sleeping, but alive. And with that realisation, there came a whispering voice, the little temptress calling to us, drawing our attention to an opening, huge, gaping in the creature. It was black as night, with outcrops of what appeared to be stone around it. The depths of the moor called to us, enticed us, weaving stories of glory and knowledge beyond anything that we imagined. We camped that night, doing our best to resist the cry in our minds, calling us to the pit. But the weaker among us broke, and we descended into violence. I tried to prevent it, worked to stop them, but they were maddened. I was forced to watch as my party butchered each other, sacrificing those they had murdered to the ancient beast by throwing the bodies into the glorious hall. What ancient purpose they hoped to satisfy, I know not, though I suspect the voice was instructing them on who to awaken and release it. There was a pause, silence, as a despire leaned back, memories clearly racing for his mind. They were successful, 
A sound I cannot describe ripped through the air. I fled, rumblings coming behind me. I returned to the Empress. She was less than pleased. As a result of the events, and because there was no one left alive, I was selected as ambassador to the creature. A death sentence. So I fled, again, for fear of my life. I betrayed everything I have ever known, leaving my duty. And yet, the voice remains. It calls to me, and I fear the creature follows. Abruptly, the despire stirred and marched in the room, leaving the group to stew on the story he had trapped them in. Yikes, said James. That is an epic story. Seems like it could be the end of the Despire Empire, poor being. Muttered agreements meet his announcement. Anyway, who wants to help me throw him out of the airlock before we get destroyed by an eldritch horror? A much more enthusiastic response meet this question. George woke suddenly, without the steady, warm awakening that usually accompanied being brought out to cry asleep. Emergency alarms were blaring, and almost immediately he became aware of something in his mouth. Multiple somethings. He sat up, quickly, spitting. Ugh! Damn space spiders, 